what we're looking at here is my mid 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro you can see all of the uh, specs right here it is high Sierra even though it's August of 2019 and Mojave is out and almost Catalina is here uh, I'm still using high Sierra because it's a very stable OS and upgrading would only slow me down slightly I don't need dark mode so I'm still on high Sierra this is a top-end model. This is the highest-end processor, 2.8 gigahertz i7. It has the maxed out 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it also has the Apple one terabyte SSD internal, which is the largest you could get at the time. And the graphics has a discrete AMD Radeon R9 M370X with two gigabytes of memory. And of course, when that is not in use, it has the Iris Pro. So those are the specs of my machine. We can see up here that I've got um, a variety of things going on here. I have my fans to be consistent uh, at 50%. The left and right side are set that way so they're not going to ramp up and down. And that way I can more easily show you the before and after repasting. I also have a program called Volta which is currently not in use. Uh, I'll turn that on a little bit to show you. Uh, but it lets you undervolt the CPU to potentially run it a little bit cooler but again that is off right now um, all of these other settings it's off okay and what I'm going to do now uh, if we look over here at the Intel power gadget uh, it says about power gadget this is as of August 2019 the latest version 3.5.5 for Mac and it shows us at the top uh, the power that's being used uh, and then next to that is the frequency so you can see we're going up and down right on the 2.0 gigahertz uh, clock speed. And then down here is temperature. And you can see how I'm switching to other apps and doing things so the temperature rose a little bit. But um, when I wasn't doing anything at all at idle, it was about uh, you know, 50 or so, but it rose here above 60. And I have, you could probably hear the background noise. That is an air conditioner running to make sure that the room temperature here is. Uh, right out about 25, 26 degrees Celsius or uh, about uh, 73, uh, 74 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, I will keep the room temperature the same uh, as it is now after uh, the repasting. It is evening here so there's no direct sunlight coming and hitting it I just have room lighting on and um, so we are it, you can see here the temperature is about leveled off at 64, 63 uh, degrees Celsius and of course at the bottom it's showing the uh, core utilization. If I go up here to my menu again we can see all of the various uh, temperatures that it is listing core 1, 2, 3, and 4 and part of the reason that the, the cores are this high is because I'm also doing screen recording uh, if I turn off the screen recording, obviously you wouldn't be able to see anything, uh, but then the CPU utilization would go down and it would drop actually below 50. Uh, but again, I have the fans on consistently, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the CPU uh, in Cinebench test, which will max out the CPU, and you can see how that goes. So I'm going to do that right now and it's doing its performing the render test and again remember I have also the uh, screen recording that's going on in the background as well so you can see that uh, it it has turbo boosted well above the clock uh, the maximum clock speed is 2.8 which is this gray line here right so it turbo boosted uh, just above 3.5 gigahertz and then it fell down below its baseline clock again which is 2.8 8 gigahertz and you can see that the temperature is 99.10 98.3 98.5 core utilization you can see is right at 100 percent we go up here and take a look you can also see uh, the data up here CPU and GPU so this is a CPU test and that's why the GPU isn't being maxed out the test is still ongoing Notice that the clock speed is still dropping uh, because it's hot. And also the uh, power here is 
dropping down as well. So a little bit more and it will be finished. So it's less than 2.5 gigahertz because you can see here this is 2 gigahertz, 2.5, and then 3, the gray line is 2.8. Coming up a little bit, the temperature is still in the 90s. Okay, now that it's finished, uh, everything is dropping a bit here. And it had a CPU score of 420. And so as we, we can see, uh, the power has dropped down, the frequency, because tur turbo boost is on, uh, it's, it's going up and down, and slowly but surely our temperature is going down, and it won't go below 60 only because of my screen recording that's going on. So I'll let it drop down a little bit lower, and then what I'm going to do is show you what it is with Volta. Now there's a lot I could say about Volta but I don't want to make this video too long. But basically it is reducing the voltage to your CPU which runs no risk whatsoever. In the worst case if you undervolt too much you're not supplying enough voltage and the computer may freeze but when it reboots you have plenty of time to turn this off so it's not going to continually freeze in an endless loop. Uh, and if you watch enough YouTube videos and you, you look on the internet enough, you'll see pretty much most people who are using this mid-2015 uh, 15-inch MacBook Pro are pretty much using the same settings at about uh, 75 or 70 millivolts lower than normal. Okay. You can also specify a power limit, and um, I specified mine at 52. And you can see up here the gray line is um, that's that's for the baseline clock, but actually it can go higher than that. Anyway, this will limit the power if you keep that checked. The performance checkbox, if you tick that, it will maximize your CPU. So I don't want to do that. And then turbo boost, it's check marked, which means it allows turbo boost to operate. Otherwise, it will just be consistently at the 2.8 gigahertz baseline. And so to apply this, what I'll do is just click Apply. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, Volta is now running the voltage to my CPU at 0 0.075 volts lower, 75 millivolts lower than what it normally is. It's telling you the clock speed here and, of course, the actual voltage being used. It's not a significant difference, but it really depends on what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is with Volta on, and again, you, you want to make sure you do apply to make sure that Volta has been applied. We're going to run the Cinebench R15 again. Note what the temperature is right now. And here we go. So you'll also see that it's still, uh, Volta doesn't do anything about the maximum temperature. I wish there was a way to manually set the maximum temperature. For example, I could set it to be a uh, maximum of 90 degrees, or if I wanted to, maximum 95 degrees. But unfortunately, Apple is the only one who can do that, and they've established it to be dangerously high, because the, the maximum temperature is 100 degrees. So. Um, allowing it to go to be 99.5 or 99.6 I think is a bit too high but they're trying to maximize every little bit of performance out of it even so uh, you can see here that it turbo boosted and it went just above 50 right because my specified maximum for power was 52 and it turbo boosted above the baseline of 2.8 to about 3. Point, I guess that's 3.6, 3.7, and then dropped down uh, like before, but not quite as low as it was before. So even though the core utilization is 100% here, you can see that, and even though the temperature is still in the high 90s, uh, this drop in frequency 
wasn't quite as much, isn't quite as much now as it was. And notice we have 447 this time. Okay, so Volta, what it can do is undervolting will allow you to maintain, in most cases, uh, it's not going to reduce your temperatures or CPU utilization, but will, in many cases, allow you to sustain a higher frequency over time. But keep in mind, all of what you're watching now is before my repasting. And so I'm going to repaste the CPU and GPU, and then we're going to run these same tests again so that you can compare. So this is the back of the MacBook Pro. We've got all of the tools that we're going to use today to do the repasting. Especially important is this toolkit. I bought it off of Amazon Japan for roughly the equivalent of US $10. It comes with this three-piece set plus this plastic pry tool, which is nice. It's Yamachi. That's actually an I at the end. Yamachi brand. But you can find something similar on Amazon in your country or the United States uh, for a comparable price. If you don't or if you don't want to buy that, being worried about inferior quality, you can get an iFixit kit that's especially made for the mid-15 uh, MacBook Pro, which is what we have here. I also have a soft paint brush, which uh, hasn't been used in paint. It's just a soft brush to uh, brush away any dust that we're going to find, and also the blower that will help in getting that off. We've got some Q-tips that will help a little bit, uh, along with uh, paper towels um, to get off the stock thermal paste with, this is Japanese, 100% ISO uh, alcohol, um, but you can use 70%, that would work just fine. Also, we have the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. This is the non-conductive paste. It is not the liquid metal, so this is safe to use. And let's get started. And here's the tool that we're going to use to remove the back screws. It is a 1.2 millimeter wide, 50 millimeter long shaft called a Pentalobe P5. Um, this pentalobe is a star, as you can see, the little star there, it's a five-pointed star. And again, in your kit, it will probably be labeled P5. Note that these two screws in the middle section are of a different length. They are shorter than the all of the others. So we want to lift up from where it says MacBook Pro and it's quite easy to take off. We can see there's a bit of dust around here. By the way, this it's now 2019. This has uh, been in use since the summer of 2016. So uh, not quite three years accumulated of dust in this machine. Now before we do anything else, we want to disconnect uh, the battery at this point here. This is a little sticker that goes above it and a little pry tool, plastic pry tool, will just fit right in. There's a little slot, a little space where it can fit in. And there we go battery is disconnected. So to access this and get it clean, this is just a little rubber piece that can be easily removed and pulled forward here. So we can clean out this area. Uh, also, there's one on the other side to clean out the dust with our brush. And if you have a vacuum, just don't suck up the screws, but you can use that as well. And after a good dusting, it looks like this. We're going to now start taking off the screws, but note on the left side by the fan, there's this rubber cap that can easily be pulled off with your finger. Don't misplace it. That will be the first screw that we will remove. And for this screw, we will use our T5 screwdriver. Don't forget where this particular screw is located. And here is the right side screw. We will also use our T5 to remove this one. 
And after this, we have our GPU, which has four screws. One, two, three, four. And then we have CPU screws. We'll only take off these two. We will leave the other two intact. So don't touch these. We'll just take off these two. So let's start with these four screws first. And again, I'm using the T5. Okay, now before we do these two screws, it's important to note that this is a piece of metal that will flip up and throw your screw if you're not careful. So you need to hold it down as you remove each of these two screws. Also the T5. We are now able to remove the heatsink. Which has very dried out and crusty thermal paste. Here's how the paste looks on the CPU. And here is how it looks on the GPU. So this was included with the Thermal Grisnik Cryonaut. It's saying you can do option A or B. A is the spreading method, which is going to use the included uh, spatula there. Or you can use the P method or the X method. Now in my experience, I've seen other YouTube videos that show the X method is superior to the P method because the P method, unless you put too much on, is going to be a circle when it gets pressed down, which means it's not going to touch the very edges of the corners. Whereas this will pretty much spread to fill the entire um, die there. And of course, if you spread it yourself with the spatula, then you are guaranteed to do it right. And since the chips are not all square, they're all different sizes, I think I'm going to go with the spreading method to make sure it gets on correctly.
Actually, I'm not sure if this spreading method is really the best approach. It's so thin, it's, it's not even paper thin. It's, it's pretty much not on there at all. It's just like a, a small coating. Well, I'm not confident in this spreading method. It's just like I put a very thin microscopic layer on it. Perhaps either the P or the X might be best after all. Oh, I haven't screwed these down all the way yet. Before I tighten those, I want to do the end screws. Now I can more confidently tighten these, although not too tight. Now we want to put back our little rubber pieces here. Last but not least, before we screw it back together, the outer shell, we need to put back in our battery connector. And yes, I'm aware that my batteries, after being three years old, look a little bit swollen, and I should probably have them replaced. So don't forget that the two screws nearest to the MacBook Pro are the shortest ones and we're going to use our pentalobe P5 to put those back. And it helps if you have a magnetized uh, screwdriver. Okay, here we are after the repaste. This is a screenshot because once I turn on my screen recorder, you know, the temperature ramps up and you can see that the temperature here in my air conditioned room, of course, is quite low. The temperatures are in the 30s. Um, for this computer, that's quite good actually for an idle temperature. Again, I'm not doing any fancy stuff. I'm just letting it stay at idle. And I took a screenshot here. And uh, so there you have it. All right, we're back at Intel Power Gadget. You can see the temperatures are ramping up because of my 
screencast going on. Volta is turned off, just like before. We're going to start the CPU test here. And it shoots up there. Notice that because Volta is turned off, it allows the maximum power to go higher, almost up to 70 watts. And it did a little bit of a dip below the baseline clock of 2.8. But overall, the clock speed you can see is uh, hovering right. Well, I dipped a little bit more, but hovering right about the baseline. Also notice that our temperature is right at 100 degrees, just like it was in all the other tests. CPU utilization down here at the bottom is totally maxed out. OK, and we've got a 518. So what we're going to do now is turn on Volta, just like before, minus 75 with a power limit of 52 watts. You don't have to do a power limit, but the power limit is not necessarily for battery power only, even though it's got a battery icon. It, it can also yield some uh, longer sustained clock speeds if you use it. You need to experiment, of course. But um, I prefer to use it set at 52. So now, this is again iStat menus. I've got the, um, the reason the fans were higher than my 50% medium setting is because, well, when the this, when this CPU gets too hot, the computer will ramp up the speed of the uh, fans accordingly. But um, to maintain consistency in my testing, I left the baseline fan speed set to medium, which is 50% of maximum. Okay, and that's just like the tests I did uh, originally prior to repasting. So what I'm going to do right now is just wait until the temperature drops a bit. I want to have the baseline temperature to be as low as possible before I start the second Cinebench test, this time with Volta enabled. Doesn't look like it's going to drop much more than this. It's hovering right about 60 there because of my screen recording. So let's go ahead and run it again, this time with Volta enabled. Note it doesn't surpass the 52 watt power limit I set for it. And it has a longer sustained higher frequency there, at least until the maximum 100 degrees is reached, and then it drops because of that high temperature. iStat menus is telling me it was actually. 100 degrees for 10 seconds. I have that warning set up. You can set it up too if you get iStat menus. Dipped a little bit below the baseline there. And we got a 544. So overall, uh, we can see that with Volta, without Volta, we are getting higher scores than we did with before prior to uh, repasting. So repasting is clearly uh, worth it. It's something that everyone should do. It's not something you should just wait around until you have a major problem before you start doing it. Um, Pretty much all of your computers now are so old that your Apple Care is expired anyway, so you're not going to be threatening any warranties or anything like that. And in fact, you're only going to contribute to greater performance and possibly greater longevity 
by doing this repaste. 